Hey guys, so it's Mark from Team Hobby Vault. So we're here in YCS London and one of the guys actually made it through to day two. Um, and believe it or not, it's Dan Mason again. So Dan, this is your shining light. Tell us what you did. Right, so I played Force Christ at YCS London. I bubbled to day two. Uh, ended up going X3 really day one, one which just put me into day two. So um, so unfortunately, didn't just, it's win. A of space, uh, so my second, my um, <laughs> my second <laughs> third rounds, but yeah. I made it to day two. First place, so yes, not too bad, I guess. And congratulations uh, for doing it as well. Yeah, Go on, show us what you did. Right, so I was playing Ghost. Ghost. Um, I feel that it's just one of the better, if not best, control decks at the moment. Um, I do like playing control over combo just because I prefer keeping control of the game outright. Um, either breaking my opponent's board or just being able to stop my opponent from playing, making them themselves. Um, it's, it does have a little bit of a tough match against Guru, but Guru's better at going first, but Altergeist uh, can tear through the uh, Guru board, especially if you open up music. It's just. Yeah, it's just better going first and second the Guru is, so it's, I felt it's better to play. Uh, so we'll start with the main deck. So I was playing three Marinessa. Uh, so on, on normal summon, it sets an Altergeist trap from the deck. And if I target an Altergeist card on my field, an Altergeist monster in my graveyard, send the card to then reform the monster. Um, so it's, it gets gets to the traps that you want to get to, gets you to Pro School, which is kind of important, uh, gets you manifestation, stuff like that. Then we got three music. Uh, it's probably one of the best it, Yeah, it's the best Altergeist yeah, monster in there. Um, it can attack directly, it can send cards. It, it does target, but it can knock non destruction, get rid of cards. Um, and it's just Lance Vega, which makes it the best card. And then we've got uh, three Siliquitas. Um, it's, it's the Kieran of the deck, so it's not great on its own, but when it's a novel multi favor, it's probably, probably one of the better cards. Uh, when it's sent from Field Scraper, it does get Recover Trap back from Grave. So if you open up with Siliquitus and Manifestation, you can then just normal summon the Siliquitus, turn it into an Almirage, set the Manifestation, and you have an interaction in, in your opponent's turn. Uh, then we've got the one more speaker. Um, not a lot happens to the deck with it being put to one, so it's absolutely fine at one. Obviously, I wouldn't mind it having three, but it, it's a one, so that's all I can play with. And then the one con 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 query. Um, it never came up that I needed a. Well, actually, no, scratch that. I, it did come up a couple of times that I wouldn't mind at the second one, but that was mostly just down to my um, not fantastic resource management at the end of the day. Um, might have just been nerves on the early rounds, just being my first YCS, but that's all the Ultimate Scouts, uh, monsters even. Uh, then for hand trap monsters, we've got three Ash. Um, one, one of the best hand traps at the moment. It stops a lot of starter cards like Orcus, Thunder want to try and crack on with their turn with. Um, it's, yeah, not a lot to say about it, everyone knows what it does. And it was a main deck of three Nibiru. Um, it, do, it did come up a few times that it does conflict with Multifaker, because if you Nibiru someone, you can't then Multifaker them. And if you Multifaker on the turn, then you can't then play them with Nibiru, so it's, you've got to choose one or the other. It's normally Nibiru if it's a big enough board, but it, it, it came up sometimes. Uh, that's all the monsters, so for spells, we were playing three of Extravagance. Uh, every Altergeist profile is playing three Extravagance. It's the best draw power the deck has. It just keeps things consistent. Your extra neck isn't massively important, so you can get away with banishing, well, with resolving three copies and still being able to play the game. Um, it hurts sometimes getting rid of three hex here or three link three bows, but that's why you play three of them just in case. And then we play the duality. I never found that it came up um, that I didn't want to see the duality. So like, whenever it was, it's always a nice top deck. It's not too bad of an extender on the first turn, and later on in the game, you, you, you don't have to use it if you have, if you have it. So it's it, it's just not really a bad card. Uh, so the spells and the traps are playing three spoofing. Uh, you shuffle an Altergeist card from your hand on the field, and such a monster. It's such best you resolve Uh Protocol. It's a monster effect negate, and it, again, lets you resolve Altergeist more effectively. And the one manifestation. 
Uh, these ratios are extremely common. Um, I have thought about the second manifestation, but it's not come up enough that I feel it's warranted to play it. But it is possible in the future that if Ultra Guys are getting battered, then we might need the help with current resources. Uh, then other traps we've got are three impermanents. Um, I did open up the impermanence multi-faker about four or five times over the weekend, so it was quite nice. It happened a couple of times today, and happened a few times on Saturday as well, so it's it's always nice when it happens. Uh, we've got three judgment, helps keep the deck alive, it's always good opening it, it's it's always live as well. It's it's fantastic having it in three from deck. Then we've got three strike. I was on two strike for quite some time, but I've now realised how much of a mistake that was. That I need three copies of it to keep my deck alive and keep my monsters from being destroyed. Uh, then we've got the two compulsory evacuation device. Uh, this card is actually insane. It's another Silk Eaters. It literally is all fake. It's also I, it happened a couple of times that I normally saw the Marinetta. It either got like impermed or Valid or something, and I was able just to bounce back the Marinetta, set up set up protocol, and then resolve Faker. It, it, it's surprising how many times that came up actually. Uh, then some two one offs. We've got one Imperial Order. Didn't see this entire weekend. It just never. Every time I drew into it, my opponent then scoops that turn because I just managed to just end the game. And then I played the one copy lost win. Other than Compulse, this is, I feel, one of the best traps in the deck. I really wish I played a second copy of it just how, because of how many times it came up. Um, I also found it's really nice setting this off for of reboot if I get rebooted. Because then if it gets destroyed, my opponent then tries to. So if I'm playing Tolkos or something, they send it with the Nigmira to make, make Galatea. I can then reset this from the graveyard and then I have an interaction off during my opponent's so it's So it's not like I have it. So it isn't like I've got no interaction with my opponent on, on their turn. Uh, that's it for the track. So then we've got the extra deck. We've got to start off with. Three hex yeah. uh, It always comes up that you need three because of extravagance. It's, you don't need any of the other Autobots extra monsters. It gets pretty big, it's a spell trap the gate, and it searches Autobots cards when it's in the field graveyard, so it does help you get through the deck a bit. Then we've got three, three bow, it lets you search for the multi faker by turning a Milu Seek into a Link Rebo. It kind of keeps you alive sometimes. Um, if you're looking, it's, it came up a couple of times that when you're looking for that extra 300 damage, if you've attacked with an, another monster, attack the Minus Seek, and you have this engraved, you attribute the Minus Seek to this back and then attack for 300. Yeah. It, it, it came up a few times. And then the one out Mirage, it, it lets you play three copies of Link Rebo, but it came up some. It came up a few times that if you want to keep uh, Silicutus on the board for like a. Like if somebody summons Pack of Tops and you want to resolve your old meal, uh, Silicutus, then you summon this instead of the Link Rebo. Or if you banish all copies of Link Rebo off your then you have another copy. Uh, then I have the War Phoenix. Um, I wanted. I'm aware that Mermaid's now gone, but I was still a little bit concerned with getting. Um, it bleeds, yeah. um, and if I have it beyond the board, then I, I kind of had a, have a hard time playing if I'm trying to kill my opponent. Um, and it's just good micro destruction in the main as well. Uh, so I am playing some poly on this side, so I have a few some poly targets. The first one is being Starving Venom. With Orcus and Thunder being the more prevalent decks at the moment, I felt that having more copies of Starving Venom was important to have. In case I've managed to wall off the travelers, I still have the one copy to resolve my screen point. Uh, then I have the one Chimera, a Valid Chimera from Salamon Great Manager. I played two Salads over the weekend, so it did come up a couple of times. I unfortunately banished it off the extravagance once, instead of just using some point first before extravagance. So I did have to make the Duplex Chimera. Um, I played it for that, played the Duplex Chimera for that reason, but I also played it because Moritzus just came out, and I felt like it. I came up against the deck that I would need this to get over them just because of how hard that matchup is. But um, I've also got the one Joyce Tommy. But if, if uh, a Thunderboard ends with um, like 
type of Colossus Colossus, then you can input one of the Colossus to the body of the debugger, well not input, but if it's a body of the Colossus, and the Titan into the Dragster Valley, target the other Colossus with it, and turns it into another one. Yeah, it, it, it gives a press, it's a press effect to gain a press counter, and it states that anything with a press counter becomes another one, and it loses its effect. And then we have the one Mud Dragon of this one. Um, I should have been too scared of Marincess, but it was another another cycle for Marincess because if they have to and a Marincess link on the field, then I can turn it into a Mud Dragon. And then I never played Cyber Dragon all weekend, but I felt like that this was needed as the Cyber Dragon starting board. I find a little bit of trouble getting through, so if I can just turn it, just break, take me two monsters by taking it into a Mega Fleet, I think it was justified. Last is the side deck, so I think everybody was citing this card. I was playing three copies of Lancia. Uh, it's good against Orcus, it's good against Thunder Dragon. It sometimes came up, but if I thought, so if I was given first and I thought my opponent was going to side it evenly, then it, it did come up once that I had to I had to chain this to an even so my board didn't get nuked and it saved that match for me. Uh, we will play 3 Unicron. Crow. Um, I didn't see a lot of people citing this, but I feel like, especially with Salad still following around with August, and not necessarily Thunder, but still with August especially, the, if they simple skeleton target Ding, you can just take the Ding out and grade up with the, with the Crow, and a lot of a lot of, because a lot of people aren't citing this, my Orcus matchups were then surprised that I was, and it then it just gave me the match. Um, we've also got three super volley. Um, it's just one of the best spell cards at the moment. It says it has a cause that my opponent can't react to it, so I just break the board and then kill my opponent. It's it's one of those side cards. Um, I don't like other back row decks, so having evenly just helps deal with them. Or if, I play, if I'm playing against, like, if Pendulum don't manage to set up the spell and trap the gate, which doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it happens, then you can just play them with evenly. Um, and I didn't actually play another control matchup, but the Storm Dust I felt was, because they are, I'm, I'm aware that there was quite a few control matchups, well, control decks being played that Dust was being needed. Um, I played Duster over Twin because it, I don't have to discard the cost and it lets me resolve this thing. Um, that's it for my deck itself. Um, yeah, I, I mentioned a few things I might want to change, so like upping Lost Winter to. Just a few. Um, just, yeah, I feel like the side deck's okay for the minute, but that's for the format that I'm in for the run. Um, yeah, that's it for the deck. Awesome. Well, Dan, congratulations. You did well for us. And uh, let's see where we can go from here. Yeah. Um,